Good morning and welcome to worship on this third Sunday after Pentecost. Brief indoor services of Holy Communion are held each Sunday at 8.30 and 10 a.m. To make reservations for those services, please go to our website, holytrinitylynchburg.org, or contact the church office. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds for worship during the prelude.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God, you are the tree of life, offering shelter to all the world. Graft us into yourself and nurture our growth that we may bear your truth and love to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The late spring, early summer growing season is well underway in central Virginia. Recent conversations at our virtual coffee hours have included updates on who has purchased and planted this flower or that, and the pros and cons of perennials versus annuals. On a recent home visit, an avid gardener with visions of sandwiches made with homegrown tomatoes already dancing in his head called attention to how much his numerous tomato plants are growing, while another person has fretted over how one of the tomato plants in her small deck garden is failing to thrive. We like to think that through some foolproof combination of hard work and sheer willpower, we are in control and will make our plants grow and thrive and produce the way we desire. We also know that's not how gardening works. That's not how life works. Our gospel reading this morning features Jesus of Nazareth sharing two gardening parables to demonstrate how God's kingdom takes root in the world. In the first, a sower scatters seed on the ground and does nothing else. The seeds fend for themselves, or as the gospel writer phrases it, the earth produces of itself, but the sower does not know how. When the grain is ripe, the sower goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. In the second parable, someone sows a tiny mustard seed in the ground and it grows into a gigantic shrub large enough to offer birds shelter in its shade. Both of these parables would have sounded ridiculous and absurd to Jesus' original audience. Most everyone with a lick of sense knows that you don't toss a bunch of seeds around and then snooze away the growing season. 
Attentive gardeners water, they fertilize, prune, weed, worry, and protect their plants from deer and birds and rabbits and other critters looking for a tasty meal. However, the sower in the story never harbors the illusion that he's in charge. He knows that he's operating in the realm of the ancient mystery of seeds and soil and rainfall and sunshine. In this glimpse of God's kingdom, it is not our human striving or our piety or our purity or our worthiness that plants us in God's garden. It is God's grace alone. In Jesus' second parable, a mustard seed is sown in the ground. The joke here is that the people of Jesus' day would not have planted mustard. Mustard was a weed, a noxious, stubborn weed at that. A comparable example for us would be like planting dandelions in our lawn or kudzu, which even though brought to this country and planted to prevent soil erosion, quickly took over, suffocating roadsides, utility poles, and and everything else within reach of its fast-growing tendrils. Mustard was a commonplace nuisance to be eradicated, not something to be cultivated intentionally. So what is Jesus saying when he describes the the sacred and the holy work of God in the world as a tiny, insignificant mustard seed? What does it mean to compare God's kingdom to an invasive, spindly weed? And what do we make of that image of nesting birds making a home in the branches of the mustard plant? (laughs) That's a joke, too. After all, who wants birds taking up residence in their gardens? Birds eat seeds and fruit and vegetables and and wreak havoc. Why give them a place to move in? Birds are why some folks put up scarecrows to keep the birds away. Jesus, however, isn't a scarecrow kind of gardener as he proclaims that the kingdom of God is all about welcoming the unwelcomed, sheltering the unwanted, and practicing radical inclusion. The garden of God's kingdom doesn't exist for itself. It exists to offer nourishment to everyone, even those whom the world deems unworthy. It exists to attract and to welcome and to include the very people we perhaps would rather shun. The kingdom of God is a place of hospitality for those whose needs, hungers, and hopes have been ignored because our eyes are so focused on our own efforts, intentions, and priorities as we police our gardens and shoo the birds away. Today, just like our ancestors in the faith, we struggle with our Lord's images of the kingdom of God. A gardener who just lets nature take its course as seeds and soil do their slow, mysterious thing. Plants we can neither control nor contain. Weeds that run wild and still nourish. Weeds in which hungry, raucous birds can nest. All of this is good news, but it isn't necessarily easy news because it's painful for us to realize and acknowledge that we are not in charge. It is good news that God's Spirit plants within us the seed of faith so that we may trust and live into the mystery that is God's free and undeserved grace in Jesus the Christ. It is good news that we may seek God in the commonplace and embrace as God's beloved those whom we may consider unwanted. K. 
Can we go about our daily lives this week looking for those places where God's kingdom is sneaking in or spreading out or or taking over little corners of our world? As baptized children of God, can we be about our daily mission to live the faith, speak the word, and do the gospel? Can we scatter the seed of God's kingdom and rest in God's grace? Can we lean into this bizarre and laughable kingdom? Can we let go of our self-centeredness and selfishness and ego so that Christ's love for the world may grow more fully through us? Can we trust that the God of the impossible to understand seed is also the God of the magnificent harvest? Because of God's amazing grace, may we learn to do so. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Holy God, you plant the seeds of faith wherever your spirit is at work. Enliven your church so that the good news of your grace may take root and grow throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, creator of all, Even the trees, shrubs, and flowers delight in your goodness. From the depths of the soil to the highest mountain, bring forth new plants. Give us the vision and inspiration to care for all that you have made. Lord, in your mercy. Judge of the nations, we pray for our leaders and those in power. Grant them the ability to regard those under their charge with humility, dedicating their lives in service to others. Lord, in your mercy. Divine Comforter, you show compassion to those in need and provide relief to those who call on you. We pray that those who are ill may be restored to health and wholeness. Bless all who suffer and use us to serve those trapped in cycles of poverty, hunger, and homelessness. Lord, in your mercy. Eternal God, we give you thanks for our ancestors in the faith who are now at rest in you. At the end, join us with all your people in the perfection of your eternal presence. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray together as we have been taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Our service now begins. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today we light candles in memory of Louise Goolsby, Stephen Schultz, and Jill Mason, all of whom died this past week. We give thanks for their lives and their witness as we keep their families in our prayers.